Hey YouTubers, welcome back. Welcome to video number 18 of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, October 15th, 2010. It's mid-October here in Muskoka and you can see the leaves have started falling off and have changed colors. Pretty soon there'll be snow on the ground. This is my backyard here behind my garage and I'll be doing a shop tour within the next week or so. Hopefully everybody's doing good. I'm going to start with the first question today from a YouTuber that has an 06 Yardman riding mower with a 20 horsepower Kohler V-twin engine. Now the YouTuber says he had to replace the battery last summer. Even with the new battery it is still hard to start. It cranks as if the battery was weak. The new battery is a little better than the factory one because the guy where I got the battery said that the OEM batteries were too weak. The concern is, is there a reason why it still cranks over slowly with a brand new battery? Well here's my personal tractor here, it's a Briggs V-twin engine, overhead valve, you can tell by the cover. What happens sometimes is the valves get loose and you have to take these covers off and readjust the valves because what happens is that the valves aren't opening when they should, thus creating a lot of compression inside the engine and making it hard to turn over even with a brand new battery. If you go to my channel, scroll through the videos, I have a video there called How to Repair Hard to Start Lawn Tractor Engine. In there I adjust the valves on a single cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine with overhead valve and I was having the same problem that this YouTuber is mentioning. Even though it's a one cylinder, the same principle can be applied to all overhead valve engines. It's easier to start there. It's much cheaper to adjust your valves first. You don't need to replace any parts doing this. And then you can move on. If you still have a problem after that, check the starter and go from there. I rarely have to replace a starter on a lawn tractor, so my guess is that the valves could be out of adjustment. It's a bit harder to diagnose without me seeing the actual tractor. So if you try adjusting your valves, it's going to be cheaper than replacing a starter. Also make sure that your battery connections are good, that there's no corrosion or anything like that because that could suck out a bit of the power before it gets to the starter. So try that and let me know what happens. Question number two today, somebody's asking me how often should you replace the shear bolts on a snowblower? The shear bolts are over here on snowblowers. They're there to protect damage to more expensive parts on your snowblower if you hit something with your blower. Here's a used one. It's still straight, nice and straight. So this one's good. Even if it's two, three, four years old, it's still good. If they're bent, like all crooked, then you should change it whether it's been in there a month or a year. This is what a new one will look like. Nice and straight and shiny. You don't need to replace your shear bolts every year on your snowblower, but as part of your maintenance in the fall, take them off, look at them. If they're slightly bent, replace them. Also, you'll know if you've broken a shear bolt because the auger is just going to spin freely on the shaft. Usually, if you're careful and you don't hit anything, the shear bolts can last you many years. Somebody's asking me if they can use an angle grinder to sharpen the augers on the snowblower here. Well, the answer to that is you should not sharpen the augers here. They're not made to be sharpened like knives. If you find that they're bent because you hit something, then try to bend them back in place so they're in perfect shape like that they'll throw the snow better if they're not bent. So it's best that you just leave the augers on your snowblower the way they are unless they're bent. One other thing you can do as well is if you find that your augers are pretty rusted, throw a coat of paint on them in the summertime. What that does is allows the snow to slide off the augers much better than if the augers are rusted. If they're rusted what happens is that the rust on the augers act kind of like a sandpaper and they may prevent the snow from shooting out as good as it could. If your chute is made of metal, this one's made of plastic, but the older blowers and some of the Arians and higher quality blowers have a metal chute, what you can do is check inside the chute here, and if you see a lot of rust in there, throw a coat of paint in there, because again, if there's rust, it's gonna prevent the snow from shooting out as good as it could. So by throwing the paint, it makes it more slippery, therefore your blower is gonna work a lot better. The next question for today is somebody who is having problems with their lawnmower with the Tecumseh engine in regards to the keyway between the flywheel and the crankshaft breaking all the time. The YouTuber says he's put a new keyway in there, puts the flywheel back, starts it up, and within seconds the key breaks again. 
What I've got here is a Tecumseh engine off of a lawnmower and I've taken off the flywheel to show you exactly what we're talking about here. So there's the flywheel key here and I'm just going to take it off. What could be causing this problem is that the keyway here may be damaged from hitting something. And when he puts the key back in, it could be wobbling back and forth. This one's nice and tight and that's what you want. Another thing that may have happened is that the keyway here in the flywheel could be damaged. It could be larger than it should be. And if that's the case, then the key is going to be loose in here. And the key is going to wobble back and forth in there, not creating a snug fit. And it's going to break as soon as you go to start the mower. So examine the keyway hole in here as well as on the crankshaft and make sure that the key goes in there nice and tight. Also if your Tecumseh lawnmower has a key like this, make sure that the large end here goes on the bottom side of the crankshaft. So the large end of the key, like I just mentioned, will go toward the bottom here. So when you stick it back in, it's going to be in its proper position. Also make sure that the plastic sleeve here is on there. Double check that the key is not loose in the crankshaft. And once you're sure that the flywheel keyway hole here is not damaged, reinsert your flywheel. Before you insert the flywheel, make sure to pull on the brake of the lawnmower so that the brake pad doesn't stop the flywheel from going on. Insert the flywheel. Then you want to make sure everything lines up here. And even without the nut and the cup back on, it should be nice and snug in there. Then when you install the cup, make sure that you have this washer there. And then put the nut back on. And I'm not quite sure what the foot pounds for tightening is, but it's going to need to be fairly tight. If the nut's not tight enough on the flywheel, the flywheel will get loose and it will break the key. Try that, double check everything, that should work for you. If that doesn't work, there could be deeper issues in the engine, like timing and different things like that. But what I just showed you is the easiest way to get started on repairing your lawnmower. I get a lot of questions regarding the Quaker State Wind Lube Penetrating Oil that I use as Quick Start. Someone's asking me if it will work for any penetrating oil. Well, the answer is yes. Just make sure you have the flammable logo here on the can and most of the time it will work as quick start. I like using the penetrating oil as quick start because there's actually a bit of oil going in there when you start up your engines. Especially good for two cycle engines that require mixed oil and gas because there's not any oil in the crankcase already in there like a four stroke engine. So any penetrating oil that has the flammable logo on the can should work for quick start. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care now.